We're getting entries. Today we have a big conversation and it's related to you have everything uh, as a, a woman, uh, you know, as a wife or as a partner. Um, you get the best cruises to Dubai, etc. You live in some of the plush places in Ghana, if it's in Accra, Trazaco, all that, some of the best estates. Uh, money is at your beck and call by your spouse, yet that spouse, we're told, is not faithful. Uh, will enter anything having, wearing skirts. Now, would you be content? So it's our conversation. We have a life code to give us that conversation. So make sure you join us and let us have uh, some time. Now, let me just introduce our guests for the moment. Today we're talking about John Kwache. Dr. John Kwache uh, has had great experience outside the country teaching as well as researching and working, especially in the United States of America, across the, the various um, developed world. Now he has re reacted in a six page to the bold vision speech by the vice president who also doubles as the presidential candidate of the MPP. Now that bold vision uh, counter also has enumerated certain concerns he has. Now we want to have um, Mr. Safwaje and uh, as well, who is a spokesperson, uh, a, sp a presidential spokesperson as well, coming in to join us as well. We have the parliamentary candidate for Ketu North, Ede Magbana. Ede Magbana is also right here in the studio, already checking some few things uh, on his phone to make sure he gets his data right. Has been writing since he came in over the last 30 minutes. Good morning to you, Adem. Good morning, Roland. Great. Uh, how's the campaign going so far? Oh, you well, haven't even started. Well, I've started campaign, and uh, let me say good morning to the chiefs and people of Ketu North mm. and to all our viewers this morning. I have started my campaign in the constituency, and it's going so well. We have a target to win about 85% plus of the vote, and that's what we are working towards. Last week, I had engagements with uh, some of the traditional leaders, mm. and uh, I can confirm that all the chiefs and queen mothers we visited blessed me and endorsed my vision for the constituency mm. and uh, such interactions will continue this week i can assure you that Ketu north is safe mm -hmm. and in 2024 you're not afraid of the no, mpp no, 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 candidate no, no, who's the mpp no. candidate uh, well, they, they, they elected, Jamesi was very instrumental in Yeah, the... but he's not contesting again. They mm. elected a gent uh, one gentleman mm. uh, three weeks ago. But uh, I, I want to focus on my campaign okay. because uh, if, I, if I want to uh, look at him, I can say that I don't have a contest, but I'm not complacent. Okay. I, I because I know that uh, Mr. Jamesi had been closing the gap. Yes, uh, that's due to some one or two reasons, but unforeseen uh, circumstances. But fortunately for him, fortunately for him, he saved himself the embarrassment ahead, and so he decided not to contest. And so they have brought one young man uh, who who is lacing his boots to start his campaign. But well, he can he can start and 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 waste his money and and fight for the fifteen percent or less that we are leaving for the NPP and the other political parties, but. He's not a competition if, if we want to look at him as an individual, but right. we are not complacent. And that is why all of us are working hard to ensure that we give President Mahama over 90% of the vote in, in Ketu North. All right. Let me say, um, also in Ketunov, a great friend of mine lives there. He's a secretary of the MPP uh, in the Volta region. Pope, Pope Yaoyevu. <laughs> Dogby, good morning to you. I wish you all the best. And uh, Pope Yaoyevu is a great guy. I mean, when you get to interact with him, it's... I thought he would be the some, parliamentary some, sometimes candidate. Sometimes can be very mischievous. <laughs> I, I, I thought he would be the parliamentary candidate. He said, Charlie Togbi, um, I want to concentrate on party work for the yeah, MPP in yeah. the Volta region. That's a good thing as well. He's doing some great work. You get to meet him. He's one of um, the great um, young leaders of the MPP in the Volta region as well. Let me say go, good morning to a number of you who, who have joined us. I'm acknowledging you greatly because we're having some difficulties on satellite transmission, but you can watch us on, on, on the mainstream as well. So uh, many of you, Sullivan's, good morning to you. Hey, Cheko, Inamuke, Kenyeke. And then we have Haruna Salifu, good morning to you. And then Nana Kujuamu. Uh, um, the Honorable Abla Jifagumashi, I've already seen you watching. Uh, Prince Ahmed, uh, Daniel Abwaji Awazi, Amama Gold, Shadai Adate, 
Kwabana Mensa Kassan Ras Kotoka, um, who I, I said that he was lacing his boot to marry Cookie. I don't know whether you can. T tomorrow yeah, is Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah. Show, show, show your metal. And then uh, Johnson, Fomabu, and then a couple of yours. Hey, Prince Anani Selassie, you say I should greet you. I've greeted you. Ben is Maoli, as well as uh, Awunpuri Samuel and Sonia all have joined us. Now, let's get Dr. Kwachi of Yaye. First, when I say that, at a crossroads, um, they are nearing the end of their eight-year, uh, you know, term, which in Ghana has become like, um, uh, you know, a regular cycle. I mean, uh, every party stays on for eight years, and then they, they they have to move on. So they are nearing the end of their eight years, and then that's what I mean by the at a crossroads. They want to extend it to, I mean, for another four years or even or, or even more. Uh, so they are at a critical juncture, you know, of their political life. When I say they have um, presided over econ an economy, a boom and a bust economy, I think Dr. Baumia himself admitted that, um, you know, during their first term, especially 2017 to 2019, they performed, you know, pretty well. I mean, they managed the economy uh, prudently and efficiently and they achieved um, you know, very good results in the sense that all the key macroeconomic indicators were trending in the right direction. But then for the period 2020 to 2022, uh, he said they were hit by COVID-19 and then the Russia-Ukraine war. And then because of some huge payments that they had to make uh, in respect of, um, you know, the financial sector, you know, bailout, and then also uh, the excess uh, capacity, energy capacity payments that they inherited. Because of these exogenous shocks, um, I mean, his claim is that uh, the economy was uh, taken off gear, and therefore the, all the macroeconomic indicators, um, you know, deteriorated. Uh, but um, in 2023, they are coming back. They are trying to stabilize you know the situation so that's exactly what i have described you know my in my first uh, you know paragraph in the in the first period of 2017 to 2019 when the economy was in a, a favorable trend um i have said that admitted that some of their policies must have contributed to that uh, in other words, they try to impose fiscal discipline on themselves by enacting the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Um, so that, you know, helped them. And, and uh, we must, um, you know, credit them with that. But I also mentioned that there were also some favorable conditions, um, you know, in, in the global environment, um, even locally, uh, oil, price, oil production increased. I think that they brought a new oil field into production. So uh, 2017, you will see that uh, the growth rate, you know, shot up to eight, above eight percent. This this must count must be attributed largely to the oil, you know, output, the higher oil output. Um, and then the IMF program, which they continued, was also in place, and therefore the program itself imposed some discipline on them. Um, so. You know, my point is that they, they they themselves contributed to the favorable economic development, but they, they also benefited from, uh, you know, favorable, uh, you know, their favorable environment. Now you come to 2020 to 2022, when we all admit the effects of uh, COVID-19, uh, uh, Russia-Ukraine war, you know, disrupting, you know, supplies um, chains around the world, which uh, pushed up oil and um, and uh, food prices, and it affected every country, you know. So naturally, Ghana also suffered as a result. Um, but we must also recognize that, and then we, we also recognize the energy the sector payments, and then the uh, uh, financial bailout costs. But we must also, you know, recognize that 
this was a period that um, the government also resorted to, you know, last scale borrowing, especially on the international capital market. Because now we, we had gone out of, uh, you know, the IMF program. So it's like we were on our own. And we were all being warned. I mean, the government was being warned that, uh, you know, we were getting into a debt crisis, a, a debt on sustainability. IMF used to warn us all the time. Um, this was a time that the uh, government also embarked, embarked on, you know, um, massive spending on its uh, flagship, uh, you know, programs. Um, and, and then if you look at our revenue performance, uh, we have never done very well. So it was a period that we did not also collect enough revenue, even domestically, and uh, we prefer rather to borrow. So we made these policy mistakes also. You know, so the point I'm making is that when you take credit, you know, for the good performance, uh, when it comes to the bad performance, you must also take responsibility for it. That's what, you know, other governments uh, uh, do. You cannot say that, oh, you know, this time around, it was all due to COVID. Uh, it was all due to Ukraine, um, 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 Russia war and that I didn't do anything wrong. This is what I'm, I'm trying to bring out that. Yes, we must admit that exogenous factors played, played a part, but there were also some domestic policy failings that must be recognized. And that's uh, Dr. John Kwache of the Institute of Economic Affairs. And if you know, one of the leading think tanks, um, very much so over the years, critical on not only economic issues, but also governance and transparency. And he has been one of the key individuals in there uh, who has been criticizing as well as um, giving some commendations to government in that regard. Adam Agbana, I'm sure you've perused his six-page document. Um, you agree with him in, in large sections, don't you? But well, um, what, what, what would be the additional thing in terms of how some of these critiques could influence voters or not about the bold vision that has been outlined now by the vice president, the presidential candidate of the MPP? Well, Roland, I had the opportunity to read Dr. Kwachi's six-page document, and I also read... Dr. Baumier's speech at UPSA, mm. I have it here, uh, the 73-page document. Mm. I have read it from cover to cover just to be well informed about the content. And so permit me to put the two documents together and make my comments on them. Let me begin with the speech by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. I was in my constituency. In fact, on that day, I was watching the football match between Nigeria and I think South Africa. And so after the speech, I simply couldn't believe some of the excerpts that I saw on social media. So I decided to print it out like I have here and read it for myself. When you go through the speech mm. by Dr. Baumia, I am tempted to believe that His Excellency the Vice President has no respect for the good people of Ghana. And for the past eight years, he and his president and the entire government have taken us for a ride and they have decided to use the same script of lies, same script of of, of manipulation, same script of great deception to get the vote of Ghanaians in December. But I must say that that script, we are used to the script and that it cannot work again in December. What you have here, the so-called bold solutions for the future is nothing but full of lies, misinformation, half-truths, and inconsistencies by the Vice President of the Republic. And I will go into the Adam, issues. Why is it that the NDC keeps begin... going on this tangent of using the word lies? No, when, be... Roland, when, I, I, when, I, I... When, when these are itemized policy yes. intentions. So uh, we, we will get into it. But you see, I'll come into, I'll, I'll explain why all Ghanaians believe that 
our vice president is a chronic liar. And I will explain using things that he himself has stated in this document. But let me begin with the analogy. In fact, paragraph four of his speech, he stated that by submitting himself to us, the good people of Ghana, he recognizes that it is akin to appearing before an employer to be interviewed for a job. Really? Yes, that's what he said in paragraph four of his speech. And so, Dr. Baumia may have forgotten that 16 years ago was the first time he and Nana Kufado appeared before the people of Ghana to be interviewed for a job. After two unsuccessful attempts, i.e. 2008 and 2012, in 2016, Dr. Baumia and Nana Kufado were given the opportunity to lead this country on the back of many promises. In fact, prior to the 2016 elections, when they appeared before us to be interviewed for the job, Nana Akufuado touted the economic prowess of Dr. Baumia. Indeed, in many of their campaign speeches, they told us that Ghana was faced with economic challenges and that the only man who had the magic wand, who had the capacity to transform this country and solve our economic challenges was Dr. Baumi, and that is why they needed to pair him with Nana Adodanko Akufuado. And so they spent eight years in opposition preaching the same message, and they sold Dr. Baumia to us as an economic messiah. You must agree, and that is what they did with many of their speeches. After selling Dr. Baumia to us and finally getting the nod in 2016, they spent seven years defending the records of Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. Then all of a sudden, Dr. Baumia appears before us and he's telling us he was just a mere mate. And, and that because he was a mate, he now wants to be given the opportunity to drive the vehicle. Now, Roland, imagine, okay, imagine you or any of our viewers, you go to Tudu Station today, that you want to board a bus to Joje in my constituency. And then the mate is the one at the entrance. It is actually the mate who you hear shouting, Joja, 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 you know that. So the mate is the one who entices you to enter the car because the mate is the one who told you the direction of the car. You sit in the car, the driver sits behind the wheel, then instead of taking you to Joja, the, the bus drives all the way to Tamale. Then when you get to Tamale, the mate was quiet all along the journey. Now you finally arrive in Tamale. That is not the destination the mate advertised to you. That is not what the mate told you before you paid and entered the bus. Then all of a sudden, such a damp mate come back to you that give me the opportunity to now drive the car from Tamale to Joje. And you want us to believe that, that mate? Because it is the mate who even will signal the driver that passenger A who wants to alight at this place. It is the mate who is supposed to check the driver and advise and ensure that the right things are done. And so the mate is so damp. The mate is quiet. It's so silly. The mate is so, is, is so insensitive, so wicked, that he knows the driver was driving us into the ditch. And he kept quiet only for us Adam, to get into the ditch. If you go the to ditch. the Constitution, you go to Article 60 of the Constitution, it says there shall be a vice president of yes, Ghana yes. who shall perform such functions as may be assigned to him by this Constitution or by the president. Very good. So I, I like the part about by also the president. Peculiar, now, peculiar now about in, the vice in, president. So now let me tell you. Comments. Let me tell you. One, two, two key things that we ought to note. Tell me. Dr. Baumia is not in his first term as vice president. That's true. And so for the first four years as vice president, we have heard the president, Nana Adodankwa Akufado, His Excellency. We have heard senior members of the government tout Dr. Baumia's instrumental role in the management of the economy. In 2020, they told us that Dr. Baumia has performed so well as vice president, such that the economy was looking good, and because of him, they needed a second term. When Nana Adodankwa appeared before the people of Northeast, he thanked them for giving him what he described as a first-class vice president. It means they told us that Dr. Baumia was so instrumental in the management of the economy. And so what has changed? That all of a sudden. So and the for first you, that's term, a big question. It's a big question because for the first four years, 
you claim you did well as vice president, that you manage the economy, that they should attribute all the successes of the so-called uh, economy, good economy to you, then all of a sudden, you are appearing before the good people of Ghana and you are telling us that you were nothing but a mere mate and that you had no control over how the driver uh, drove us into the ditch. Now today, you want to separate yourself from... So, now let me say, look, Roland, in the history of this republic, in the fourth republic, mm. since 92, mm. Dr. Baumia mm -hmm. and Nana Adodanko Akufado are the only pair, I mean, in terms of presidential candidates, who have bonded for more than 16 years. And I will explain. In 1992, it, President Rollins chose the late Dr. Aka. Then it was a Kinsen coalition. Aka. A, yeah, Aka, it was a coalition. And so Aka was leading a different political party. In 96, we were told that Prof. Mills, the late, was also chosen by President Rollins after his, uh, his own successful attempt to become vice chancellor at at the University of Ghana. Mm. And so, they proud to that, they have not had working relationship like Dr. Baumia and Nanado have had. You know that. Then, President, President Mills chose His Excellency John Dramani Mahama after uh, Alaji Mumuni was dropped. What's your point? Well, the point I'm trying to make is that these two people, Dr. Baumia and Nana Kufado, have worked together for 16 good years. They are conjoined twins. They cannot be separated. You mean in the eyes of the public or it in reality in the what the law the, says? And that is what they themselves Because what the law that. says no, it's, it's, is what's stipulated so in Article law. So, 60. So the law gives... And it says that Roland, there Roland, shall be a Roland, vice president Roland. who shall perform such functions as may be assigned to him by this constitution yes. or the... So, so Roland, assigned to him by the president. Now the president who is supposed to assign him told the good people of Ghana that because of his economic wizardry, I allowed him to run the economy. So every good thing we have achieved, give him the credit. Then all of a sudden, the abysmal performance they have spent seven years defending, he's running away from it. But let's tell Dr. Baumia that, look, he can't run away. He and Nana Adodanko Akufuado are the same. They are conjoined twins. You simply can't separate them. No surgical operation can even separate these two because Siamese they twins. They are Siamese twins. And, 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 and I just yes. hold on for you because we uh, we're going to have As Asafuji join us very soon. But uh, joining us is um, financial economist and uh, somebody who who, who teaches uh, that subject currently with uh, Gimpa uh, had been with um, the investor of Ghana Business School, but currently with uh, uh, the Gimpa. Uh, and uh, look, he's a regular contributor to this very platform. And I remember back in 2019, gave the, the warning to the Kufuado Baumia government that looking at what the numbers were, getting out of the IMF would mean that we're going to put the economy in a precarious situation. But since then, he's been making commentary on what we should have done um, and, not, and not do. Uh, he's also perused this bold vision that have been outlined by the vice president. Doctor, no, Professor Lord Mensah. Professor Lord Mensah, good morning to you. Let me quickly just uh, hurry up with you because I know that uh, you have other matters to attend to this morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Roland. Good morning to uh, panelists in the studio. Now, by now, you know that all the observations, whether it's from mainstream, the other side of the political divide, from academia, etc., seem now to have settled down. If there are key issues, five pointers that you think, um, being the bold vision of the vice president, would impact on the economy from now till we have the election, and if he is elected, to be able to implement those bold visions, what would they be based on what he said or outlined in that speech? Yeah, basically, um, we're looking at the fiscal space that the vice president will have going into the 2025 in case he should become, you know, I mean, president. Let me put it across that. The, reduction of taxes, and then possibly putting up the flat rate, and at the same time, you know, removal of some, you know, taxes that have been introduced now. Um, the vice president will not have that fiscal space to remove those taxes going into 2025. The reason why I'm saying this is that, remember, you know, for you to have fiscal space, you need to be able to generate more revenue and possibly cut down, you know, expenditure. In his delivery, he indicated that 
is going to create a parallel agency which will ensure you know control of you know um corruption and other things and then also if you listen to him carefully he also indicated that he's going to provide you know flat rate on taxes i.e one way or the other will reduce government influence revenue will be affected and I'm looking at how this conflict with the IMF of Jesse. Remember, his first year of administration, in case he should win power, will be in the, what we call it, will be 2025, and, and we'll still be under IMF. Mm. We have a program that stipulates that IMF, we have to increase our, you know, tax to GDP revenue from 15% as it stands now to 18 mm. percent going into um the end of the year that means that every year we must increase our revenue by one percent mm. and one percent you know is a huge you know number looking at the investment that has been done over the past years you realize that this economy over the past eight years has been in the hands of government control through treasury bills and you know through borrowing in the local market as a result of that, businesses and individuals are not active, that active on the market. So all the GDP that we've been recording, the growth that we've been recording mm. as a result, is a, as a government spending. So the economy itself has not tickled down to individual and business level for us to be, be able to generate revenue as expected. Mm. So if the vice president is going to Remove, you know, those 50, that fifteen percent, and then uh, the other taxes that he mentioned, and then the flat rate that he proposed. I will say that yes, he better do it now. The reason why I'm saying he better do it now is that, you know, these tax inconsistencies mm -hmm. and tax introduction every now and then mm. has a tendency of creating economic cost. Okay. The reason why it creates economic cost is that. Businesses are going to fold up. Individuals are going to be laid off as a result of excessive taxes. Ports are not going to operate as expected because the levies and all those are kind of overburdened to businesses. So it won't be wise to import anymore. It won't be wise to operate anymore. Mm. But then when government treasury bills is giving out 33%, mm. you are better off putting your money in treasury bills and sitting at home mm. to enjoy Okay. That kind of you know, returns. So effectively, I'm saying that if you look at it carefully, you know, that kind of, you know, economic cost, right, that is being created now. Even if the vice president should introduce this, you know, flat rate and all those, will not benefit from it that much because the economy would have been deteriorated to 2025. And as a result of that, the cost of implementing that policy will be more than, you know, the benefit that we're supposed to bring from it. So if he has something to do, he must do it now. Right. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it, I think it's very um, interesting that you brought this up because that now and the post-election period, if he is elected, has become a tiny issue, if not a point of debate dividing or creating some level of um, disagreement between what the NDC is saying, what some academicians and even some members of the public are indicating. Now, why should he be influencing policies based on those visions he's espousing to do post the election now and not wait till after the election? And why is it not feasible? Right, it's reflected in my submission. I made it clear to you yes, that yes. the tax inconsistencies and the tax introduction here and there is costing the economy so much. Mm. Businesses are moving to where they will be safe in terms of their taxes. But every businessman thinks about his tax returns. From now to 2025, it's a long time. And I can tell you so many things can happen within this period that if he doesn't take care his implementation, you know, we should also appreciate that well, like policies are time bound. Okay. You cannot hold up a policy when you are part of a government and say that you're going to implement that policy later on. When you know very well that the existing policy is creating more costs 
than the benefit that is supposed to give us. So from what I'm looking at it from the economic perspective, mm -hmm. but then looking at it from the governance perspective, he's, he's working with a team. What we need to appreciate is that even if he becomes a president, mm -hmm. he's not going to do the job alone. As we speak now, he forms part of a team, a team that is implementing government policies. And as a result of that, I don't think he can dissociate his, himself completely from, you know, what is happening on the ground. Okay. Because when he becomes a president, right, he's going to appoint ministers. The same way Nana Kufuadu's government appointed him as a vice president. He's going to appoint a vice president. Is he telling me that he's going to control the economy all by himself? The answer is obviously no. So he's part of the team. And so therefore, if he has any impact or if he thinks a policy will make impact, Ghanaians need that policy, policy now as we speak. Right. Um, elsewhere in the developed world, the, the, the announcement that is made by, let's say, the head of the Treasury or sometimes even by some key, key individuals on Wall Street or even by the president, etc., uh, tends to uh, create some level of commotion in the market. Now, knowing that when it comes to fiscal policy as well as monetary policy, we have those who have been appointed to ensure that supervision and implementation is done are on the economic management team headed by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Do you find it a bit unnerving or untenable as somebody who watches the market that there are recommendations, especially on what we've seen, tax handles, etc., will not be taken by cabinet? Yeah, I think I think um, I don't think so because um, if you look at you know the reason why you know Dr. Baumia was brought into the party is as a result of his economic acumen. Why he's bringing on board as an economic you know manager? That is why he was brought on board. So the confidence that was posed in him, mm. you know, these are not seeing it as expected, and as a result. The best for him that he go, you know, um, go through this um, um, political, you know, um, 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 what do you call it, political appointment would be to tell Ghanaians that, you know, he was just an economic advisor. And let me tell you one thing. I mentioned earlier that he was part of a team. Mm. If government failed, it's the team that has failed. And so he is part of what the happening as we speak. Now. He cannot completely take himself off. So um, it, it's about time Daniels appreciate that he was part of the team. And as a result of that, there's nothing new. Apart from that, economic, is, economic management is a continuation. Mm. Whatever, you know, is happening now, you know, we will determine what we can do in from 2025 we formed, we went to IMF, which is a program ending somewhere in 2026. What is required of us in the IMF program, we can't change it. And so if you have told IMF that you're going to increase, you know, your, um, what do you call it, revenue by 1% mm -hmm. every year. At the same time, you have a vice president who is a promising counter to it, right? Then it becomes, you know, a problem. Let's look at the digitization aspect of this, you know, submission. Yes. Look at it carefully. You have to understand that. Look, we have two, you know, reasons why we need to digitize as an economy. I appreciate the initiative that has been taken, even though we have not leveraged on it so much to feed into our revenue generation. In fact, for the first time, sometimes I, I get proud when, you know, I show up my Ghana card anywhere I find myself within the country because I lost my Ghana card and trust me, the procedures that you, you have to go through to get one is quite tedious. And as a result of that, when you have one, you have to cherish it. And apart from that, the integration of it to the various agencies, the banking hall, you know, other transactions that you want to do and all those, I really appreciate that. We, we normally digitize economy to ensure that there is an information. Beyond that, we digitize the economy 
for efficiency. Right. Efficiency in revenue generation and all okay. other things. Okay. Which he accepted, he put that in his word submission. Mm. Now let me put it this way. There are two basic needs of an economy. Technological needs and then primary needs. When we talk about primary needs, we are talking about food on the table for many years. You know, education, good roads, shelter, okay. employment. So if a typical Ghanaian has this primary need, right, and he has a job, transaction will obviously be ongoing. Then you ask yourself, how do you leverage on digitization to ensure that those transactions that are going on, government gets a fair share of it in mm. terms of gas contribution. Mm. Okay. That is what I'm looking at. So we need to make sure that we prioritize the primary needs of the economy mm. before we move on to the secondary needs, which is digitization. I don't have a problem with, you know, going on digital, but that shouldn't be the main economic, you know, driver. We have to make sure that there's food. But once there's food, everything will come you know, we'll be, we'll be in control. Okay. Thank you very much for this. Um, uh, I think in my lay mind, you're saying that we should look at the bread and butter issues first before we look at some of the exponential phenomenal things. And Professor Lord Mentor, thank you for joining us. Always great having you. And um, you wanted to conclude before. Yes, yes. So let me, let because me, um, I, let me just um, introduce the parliamentary candidate for Bosumi Frehu. And Nana Safuiji is here. He's a regular on the show. Comes here sparingly, but a regular all the same. Good morning to you. It's parliamentary candidate for the good people. The people are so good. So you are the good people of Bosnia because they are good. Speak up. The parliamentary candidate for the good people. So you bring always remember to bring Actually, the good people, yes, because the people are too good. All right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Professor Lord Mensah, thank you. So I, I, I give you two minutes to wrap up on this. Yeah. So in conclusion, Roland, mm. Ghanaians cannot mm. trust a meat banza who kept quiet, helped his driver to drive us into the ditch, and now makes a U turn asking us to trust him with the vehicle because he simply is a mate that is not trustworthy, a mate that cannot be trusted. Mate banza. To, yes, he's a mate banza. Because if you were a mate, like I said, then, you advertised that you are taking me to Joje. Then I sat in the car. You kept quiet for your driver to drive me all the way to Tamale. Then you turned back and you now tell me that, let me be the one to drive you from Tamale to Joje. When you kept quiet for the driver to drive us into the ditch. As we speak today, 850,000 Ghanaians have fallen below the poverty line. That's according to the World Bank report. As we speak today, Debt to GDP ratio, and I'll give you the scorecard of Dr. Baumia moving a bit in my in my next submission. But again, Roland, on this let round. me yes to, to run up. There's this funny perception, and I think that Dr. Kwachi also repeated part of it in his critique of Dr. Baumia's speech, where they are all trying to credit Dr. Baumia and the NPP with their economic successes chalk between 2017 and 2019. And it cannot be the case. Why Roland, not? I have here in my hand the EIU report released in November 2016. In that report, the Economic Intelligence Unit made two key predictions. The first one was that they predicted the NDC will lose the 2016 elections. The second prediction was that regardless of who wins the 2016 elections, Ghana's economy will grow by over 7%. And you know why? Because by 2016 November, President Mahama had invested so much into the oil sector that he added two new oil fields. So instead of the 90,000 barrels of crude that we were getting on daily basis, by the addition of the 10 fields and the Sankofa fields, Ghana was going to get over 200,000 barrels a day. And so that is what propelled the economy to grow. So even if it was Ekiadonko, or the PPP, CPP, or any other political party that won the 2016 elections, that growth rate that they are taking credit for would have been chalked because of the investment of President Mahama. And so this is the report. Now, they also make the claim that before COVID, the economy was so good, and that is laughable. It's a ridiculous claim for anyone to make. You know why? This is a report from January 2020, when the government formed a 40-member committee to 
work on the falling depreciation of you the You mean city. the FS committee? The FX committee, of which Franklin you Kujo was yes. part. Okay. Senor Hussi, how many all of them were there? 40-member committee. What's wrong with this that? This was in January 2020. Why are in you January bringing 2020, this up? did we have COVID? Because these are the economic indicators. In 2016, Dr. Baumia told us that one of the most important indicators of economic growth was the exchange rate. In January 2020, did we have COVID? And yet the economy had fallen, had collapsed. Just mindful of the mic. Huh? Yes. So, so, that people so in, in January 20, 2020, we didn't have COVID, and yet the city had depreciated by 12.9%. And their only solution was to put together 40 people to go and drink tea. And, and they call them the FS committee. What has been there in the report from that committee? Now, here in my hand is a release from the Ghana Health Service. This was dated 12 March 2020. That was when the first two cases of COVID was reported in this country. So the point is that even before COVID, Ghana's economy had, I mean, collapsed. It was on the verge of collapse. Look at the debt to GDP ratio in 2019 December. That was before COVID. Debt to GDP ratio had risen from the 54 percent that President Mahama left it to 91 percent in 2019 December. So why is this funny, this laughable, this ridiculous claim coming from that before COVID the economy was well? Me. The economy was sick, and Dr. Baumia and Nana Dudanko Akufado cannot be cannot be as on the rate. Oh, Dr. Two of them says that at all... least there's some level of credit. And I'm telling you that he was, he so was you are giving them credit. That. No, I'm saying that he was giving them the credit based on the economic figures. But I have proven to you that regardless of who, whoever won the 2016 elections, 2017, 2018, because of the oil sector growth, we're expecting that growth uh, okay. in the economy. Now, and I also, I've also proven to you again mm. that prior to COVID arriving in this country, the economy was already a mess. And so Dr. Baumia should stop this attempt to make it look as though Ghana was heaven before COVID in 2020. You, you take a critical look at all the observations that have been made since Wednesday when the vice president um, uh, did that bold vision address and you look at the counterfact, et cetera. Um, what, what's your opinion that's running in the corridors of power, especially within the DMB team? Quick one. Let me say a very good morning to you, your viewers, and the good people of Busumi Freon. And also wish the family of Mr. Peter Ejia Jimai, one of the aspirants in our recently ended contest, who passed yesterday. He was one of the parliamentary aspirants. In fact, this, this was his second time, and he passed yesterday. So For which constituency? Busumi Freon. Yeah, so may so rest in peace. May so rest in peace. And um, now, Roland, I came in, saw my brother so worked up and fired up. Mm. What's the point? The point is a certain character in the body politics of Ghana has outlined his vision. A certain character in the body politics of Ghana has outlined his vision. And Dr. Baumia is not an unknown quantity in the Ghana politics. In mm. fact, out of the five vice presidents we've had, from a car, a conkensing a car, to him now, Dr. Baumia is the most visible, the most popular, the most efficient vice president we've had. I am not surprised that he is the descriptions I have given him, the efficient, the popular, the, I mean, visible vice president, because he changed the narrative of our body politics through his series of lectures that changed completely the, 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 the nomenclature of our politics in this country. He, that too. We've seen Vice President Mahama, we've seen Vice President Mills, we've seen, and all of them. We didn't see this kind of vice. I don't person. understand. You're saying that even if individuals convene lectures, then they become. No, uh, okay. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I'm asking you a question. I am telling you that Dr. Baumia, as a character in the body politics, completely changed our perceptions, our uh, 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 views on the roles of vice presidents in this country. So he came out after two or three months of being elected the vice president of this country, that he is putting out his vision 
We all have visions. <laughs> Adam has visions. That's why he wants to lead the good people of K2. I have visions. That's why I want to lead the good people of Busumifre. Everybody has visions. So it is important we know the vision he is outlining. I do not understand why my brothers and a lot of people on their side are too fixated about the fact that because he is part of the government, he cannot have a vision. I don't understand. Look, even now, NADMO, VRA, all other agencies, even when they bring out something, they will need to run it by the president to commission it. It must align with the vision of the president. And Dr. Baumia has never anywhere said that he is not part of the government. That is why if you listen to the speech of which my brother has a copy here, you would notice clearly his admi admission that he is part of the team and critically outline his role in the team. He said the physicals uh, were being managed by the uh, finance minister. The monetary policies were being managed by the Bank of Ghana. He led the digitization drive. So he outlined. And for me, it is important that we look at his contribution in this government. Digitization. Look, in a village in Bosome Freho called Biase, a small chip compound, get constant delivery and supply from their drone services. Which is zip line. Zip line. Which is digitization led and championed by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. In fact, we were trying to count and it was almost 32 different policies led and championed by the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. We were trying to count one for John Dramani Mahama when he was the vice president and we couldn't find any. I don't know when, if my brother here oh, no. would help me count some of them or outline some of them. But if I tell you where Diase is, when you hit Bonfa, you get to Peminase, you move to Diase, and the inconvenience you are going to get dragged and what the zip line is doing for the good people of Diase in Busumifrao, you admit that the man has critically played a role in this government. Look, hear that too. A lot of people will kill in front of the NHIS hospitals, uh, 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 offices to renew their health insurance cards. But through digitization, now you sit in the comfort of your house, your room, your bed, and renew your card. That is the, the digestion. And it impacts on the economy. Today, we buy credit, electric, uh, well, prepaid electricity credit with our phones. That is the digestion and how it has impacted on the economy. He mentioned uh, 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 interoperability and then people came, oh, it's been done here, it's been done there. I ran that check. The fast, fast, is it fast check or fast, fast, check. fast check? And I challenged them that you mentioned Tanzania, you mentioned Kenya. It is not true. What they have is different from what we have. And I ran it by our sister party Kanu in, in Kenya. And I ran it by our sister party Chadema in Tanzania. And it was false. So Dr. Mahmoud Baumia actually, really and truly has played a key role in this government. And he is not running away from this government. But of course, as a human being, as a person, as an individual, he has a vision. And what are some of his visions he's talking about? He's talking about the PPP arrangement that he believes and thinks and finds in faith that when we introduce the PPP arrangement, it will cut down the expenditure of government and we can be able to lessen the pressure on our budget. Key critical. Are we to look at that? Will it help us? Is it important at the critical moment where we find ourselves? Is that what we need as Ghanaians? Look, when you go to US, when you go to China, when you go to all the, all the places, private sector is employing the chunk of the population. Here in Ghana, government is rather taking the burden of employing the chunk of the people. Dr. Mahmoud Bahumia is saying that for us to be at the a plate and a point where we want to be, we need to encourage the private sector to employ more. 
so that they will lessen the burden on the government and then the private sector can expand and take a lot of our youth who are, who are, are, are finding it difficult to find to have job. Is it critical? Is it important? He said the uh, tax on ECG, the emission tax, the e-levy, when he comes, he will take them out. Look, the e-levy tax, even before he gets there, then it has even outlived its purpose. Because the e-levy was introduced to show up the deficit that the COVID brought us. Is it key? Is it relevant? Look, the tax on ECG, it was introduced by NDC. So what is the point? For me, Roland, you have a nice, what do you call it, manifesto here. Not manifesto, a, 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 a lecture, which is a vision of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. The question is that Dr. Uh, 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 John Damani Mahama was elected about a year before Dr. Mahmoud Baumia was, uh, was elected. Why is his vision? What is he going to do? Even he that have just one term. You are talking about a driver and a mate. And I watched one program and I was laughing. Look. You are a driver. You drove us and had accident with us. Damaged the car. Destroyed everything. Even you yourself, you had fractures in your face with full of injunction valet and bandages. Now you've gone to... In the accident. In the accident. So what will happen to the mate in that accident? Would, the mate yeah. would. You see, when it happens like that, largely, the mates are so fortunate to even jump out. Of. How would they do that? I'm the telling you. Closed. No, I'm telling you. Listen. So you have such a driver. Uh, that that mate, no, that, no, yes, so that mate, right, yeah. that mate can even happen to lose his life. Yeah, very nice, yeah. No, the, the mate can no, even, no, no hold on, the mate can even happen to lose his life. You said there's a driver. Yes, yes. Because no. you brought These this driver. Cars. Listen, and, no, he, he, he the, mentioned it. And he the mentioned driver, it. Yeah, and the I mean, driver okay. is traveling on a long journey. Yes. And we all take trotro. I don't know when somebody takes... Okay, it's a commercial car, uh, really, all right? If I made and, my point, and, then, and, then, okay. and then decides not to close the door for okay. safety reasons. Okay. And so if there is an accident, mm -hmm. and for many of the times, Any adapt, while, anything can happen while the driver, Roland, because don't, don't if long, it is don't, going don't, to be a head-on collision, will be the yeah. most you person can, who the, could the face fatality. Can die. Anything can okay. happen to them. Okay. Mate. So the you mate, accept that the mate will I accept any of that scenarios you are bringing. This is driver or car number one with the mate, John Dramani, Mahama, Emisata, and whoever. And I don't know even if it's fit into the narrative that that is why we don't even have Emisata anymore. So that is the driver. That is the NDC car. Now you have the MPP car, which the driver is moving towards, quote and unquote, a different direction. You mentioned Juje and Temali. So it's a different direction. Now the mate is telling you that when you give me the wheel, I will bring you back to your direction to Juje. You are saying that you prefer the driver that took us to have accident and we even lost the mate to the Mr. driver. Mr. Jay, but usually, ah, no, when the, no, mate, the, the, the mate questions <laughs> the driver, hey, Roland, listen. If, look, where you are heading is wrong. So no, Roland, is it that the mate did listen, not Roland. question the Roland, driver? Listen, listen. Whether or not the mate questions the driver, it is the sole prerogative of a driver to decide to listen to the mate or not. For them to go, the two of them to go I, and I crash am, and die. Yes, because you have the wheel. I don't have the wheel. I don't know why we are. It's it's becoming. Look, get, get to thirty seven and get to ask the mates and the drivers. Let's wrap there. up on the on, on the mate scenario for me. And ask them. You t they will tell you that I will decide. You will say this. You will tell the driver this. It is the driver who have the wheel, and the driver decide what I want to do with the wheel. You have little. You can make suggestions. When you are fortunate, the driver will listen. Hmm. You have a problem with the mate who wants to bring you back. To the normal destination, Joje, as compared to the driver who had accident with the car. Right. That and is the problem, Mr. Safoje. Why is it I, that I, if no, the mates, no, a lot no, Mr. Mr. Safoje, yes. why is it that if the mate mm. is aware of how the car could be well steered or driven, does not, if he knows that the driver is leading them into a wrong direction or a ditch, do the prompting? or give the right solutions to the driver so that they head in the right direction. It, it hitherto, and this has also been espoused even by Dr. John Kwachi as well as uh, Professor Lord Mensah, that the solutions partly should be used in resuscitating the economy now before you even head into the election. And if you win, you fully embark on those full visions and solutions. I agree, perfectly.
I don't have a question. Why? That's a question. Um, yes, you say I, you agree to my question. Yes. Why? I am say, uh, you see, it is important to understand that the vice president, the president, and the team, the cabinet, are working in tandem. I don't understand. They work together. Meaning what? Meaning every decision that they make must be a consensus among themselves. How many people make up cabinet? No, I think... I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not certain, yeah, 16, I'm not certain. I'm not certain with the numbers now. Okay. Yes. The um, economic management. Do we have the Bank of Ghana governor? I don't know. Yes. Okay. Do we no, have the no, finance minister? The finance minister is obviously okay. part of it. But so the, point, the Bank the, of the Ghana point, the point is governor really takes, takes care of when it comes monetary to policy all, all the policies when the it comes to monetary. Yeah. 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 And then he. So. The point I'm an making, economic the point I'm management team to cabinet, which is just made up of 19 people. And let me, let me, let me, a number of the critical me, people in let, cabinet let me, are also members of the I, I, EMT. I don't, I don't know, and that decision will be rejected by the president. I don't know the, so I don't know the point you want to make. But no, I'm me, asking a no, question. I'm, coming, I, I it's a question. I'm, I'm answer, not making a point. I want, I want to say a question. Let me ask you that. A critical decision like we want to go to IMF or we won't go to IMF or we want to go to IMF. Cabinet sits. And then individuals within the cabinet makes their point and reason why we should go or we should not go. What was the position hold of the on, vice hold president? On, hold on, I cannot tell you. I'm not there. But he led oh, the listen, You are not getting it. He led it. You oh, are not getting it. The decision there, irrespective of what position the vice president will hold, if the decision from there is that we are going to IMF, mm. the vice president cannot say, Mr. President, I beg to differ, so I am not okay. part of this decision. All right. Can you say that? Right. You cannot. And if they even surcharge you mm. to lead the negotiations for the IMF discussions, you will do it. All right. Mr. Safoje, do Unless, you, of course, do you, you want also to know say that, that PPP I'm arrangements have been with us for a very long time? And it's not so, something so, propounded so, by the vice so president. Where, I'm asking you a question. No. I am not, or we are not saying that the visions outlined by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, all of them, are visions out of the blues that he invented into our body politics. No. Okay. Okay. Some of them might be a part of us, but he believes and sees that when I come, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. For example, I want to, I, I, want, I would operate or work with about 50 ministers. And you are saying that, oh, you are in this government, and this government have more than, uh, let's say, 80 ministers. Why don't you uh, 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 tell the president to... According to Article 78, the president appoints ministers. And it doesn't say that the president should appoint ministers in consultation or run it by the vice president. It doesn't say that. I'm not totally saying that. They will not consult the vice has, president. Has Hold somebody on. said oh, it's the on. vice president who runs the country? Nobody has said that. No, that, that is the point you are making. And we are saying that, look... Every individual have their own vision. Okay. As right. we are talking let's, now, let, let's I am even looking at a point where we'll be benchmarking Dr. Baumun Baumien's visions that have been outlined with that of uh, 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 John Ramani Mahama's vision. Then we'll know that these are the visions of John Ramani Mahama and these are the visions of Dr. Baumun Baumien. Which ones among them will help us as a country? That is what we're supposed to be doing. You have a vice, you have, you have uh, a flag bearer. Former president, for almost two years, we don't even know what he's coming to do. We don't know. And you are here seriously, I mean, chastising somebody Roland. who has a vision. And I've outlined the visions. Roland. That is the point. Okay, Roland, um, yes. let me let's, say that. Let's I have am, three minutes on yes, this. Yes, three minutes. One, I am scandalized, he says that, uh, so scandalized this morning that my brother Asafueje creates the impression that Dr. Baumia for the past seven years, has been a very useless vice president. That is the point he just made. What do you mean by useless? Because I told you that Dr. Baumia, in paragraph four of his speech, said his speech was akin to a job interview. And in 2008, when they appeared before us, and when he was selected, the point, the requirement, the criteria the reason for which he was picked, even when he was not a sitting member or he was not a member of the NPP, we were told that Nana Akufuado convinced the NPP leadership that the gentleman was an economic messiah and that they were hiring him.
because of his ability to turn things around with the economy. Then all of a sudden, he has spent seven years being vice president, and you are telling us that he is unable to convince the president to make key decisions on the economy. It means that he, the last seven years, he was a useless vice president. What do you that mean is what you have said. Useless? Because if I was, if I, Roland, if I hire you on condition that you have expertise in economic management, for which reason I want you to assist me to state the affairs of this country. Also stated. also stated. Okay. For which reason you went to the people of the, the uh, uh, North, Northeast and told them that the vice president was a first class vice president. So when I, I, I don't describe Dr. Bamiya as first class, what, 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 was, what was he for? That Was he a first class vice president in saying yes? Was he just you a have boy one boy? Half minutes, was he just a boy boy that anything he says that the vision was said, of John Mahama. That, he hasn't seen it. Oh, Roland. You see, it's very interesting when the NPP guys are claiming no, that. No, I'm the, saying the it. I will come back. Yes, we'll, we'll come to the yeah, achievement. I mean, I mean. So you give me that. <laughs> Let me speak. One, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has consistently Which shared his vision saying? for his vision for this country. He organized a lecture called the Ghana at the Crossroads, where he shared about 30 key policy decisions. In his tour of the country, the building Ghana tour, his Excellency had shared at all these functions his vision for the people of Ghana. He mentioned the 24-hour economy. He even went to the extent of speaking about how we want to manage sports development in this country. And so when they claim that they are not hearing anything, Roland, before we end, I will share with you 60 key policy decisions that President Mahama has announced on his campaign tour so far. But you see, the election is about two things. One, track record. <laughs> and two, the vision of the people. So today, we are assessing the track record. Now, let me give you the scorecard of the two gentlemen. Roland, <laughs> no. as of December 2016. You have a minute. Roland, yes, as of December 2016. No, but these are facts. You can check them. As of December 2016, huh? total see, depth. Chooses what he under, to no. say, you see, you, 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 see, you, you, see you see, your vice president has been well, useless you by your assertions. You see, you see. So that, 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 you see, you are in the bus as we speak. You are in the bus. He claim he's still the Please, mate. You have a minute, oh. Yes, you claim you are just a mate. You are in the you are the mate. And you as a Fueje, on many occasions, even on this platform, you came here, you defended the 126 ministers that you had. You had you yes. defended the the balloon yes. all of a sudden. Yes. You are making a tenant, yes. you are making a Kufaru looks no. like he took in lateral no. decisions. No. No. Now let's talk about the taxes that Dr. Baumia promised oh, to man. scrap or remove before we get I to the scorecard. For example, you make mention of something like the, uh, the, the emissions levy. Watch this. Uh, now, Mike. emissions levy. The NDC in parliament, mm -hmm. the NDC as a political mm -hmm. party, we have criticized the emissions levy. You are the head of the economic management team. You are sitting still in the bus, and you are allowing Akufado to drive us into the ditch, and you tell us that, you wait. I know the tax is not good. I know it is insensitive. But wait till December. Then I will turn you back onto the right route. Such a banza meet, and you want us to trust you with power. Number two, the tax on betting. When they introduced the tax on this platform, they told us it was to discourage gambling. Was that not the reason that they you gave? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, Roland. They said that they wanted to discourage gambling. That's why they introduced the 10% tax on betting. Was that not the reason? We told them that they were lying. They needed money. Today, Dr. Baumia makes a U10 and says when he come, he will scrap the tax on betting, which the NDC has already promised. So is Dr. Baumia now telling us that the earlier reasons they gave, that now he wants to come and encourage gambling, such liars. You see, when you tell one lie, you have to keep telling other lies to be able to maintain the first one. They have become so laughable, so ridiculous that Dr. Baumia, let me tell you, these are the scorecard. Total debt as of December 2016 was 120 billion by the NDC. As we speak today, the one who promised never to borrow has led us to borrow, and we are in debt of Anasafi. excess of 600 billion. In terms of Anasafi. total revenue, mm. the NDC had only 248 billion in total revenue, be it oil and all of that. You are over 830 billion. What why. do you have to show for it? Yeah. And all of this, as, as we speak today, right. as we speak no, today, Roland, so Roland, like as we speak today, debt to GDP you. ratio. Nah, nah. It's in uh, essence of Nasa Fuji, the, the, and, the, and, and, and you tell us that Dr. Baumia, this the, banza, the, the, the important, he's a failed the, vice president. The, 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 the important question then I have to ask you is, if you look at how people have reacted, whether it's the media, the academicians, to the vice president's speech, somebody will say that there should be something in there that um, makes everybody 
know that that is a vision that is going to transform. Did you hear Adam saying he's a useless vice president? Did you hear that? He used the word, yes. Did you yes. hear that? Yes. And I you allowed it. it go? Oh, but you, oh, you no, 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 I'm, I'm, no, I'm not asking Adam. I am not asking Adam. Did you hear that? And did you allow it to go? What, when is it something oh, is useless? Relax, what does it mean? Relax. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you a useless when president who useless? wants to come back again. Former president who wants to come back again. We were in this country. <laughs> eh? We slept in the dark for yes, more yes, than yes. four years. Such a useless president it's wants to himself. come back again and himself. plunged us into further darkness. That, we were in this I mean, country. We were in this country. We were in this country. We were in this country. Eh? Okay. Young teachers who had taught for three years could not get salary. Those who got salary were only paid for three months. Such a useless Mahama wants to come back to become a president of this country. We were in this country. We were in this country. Eh? Young graduates from Polytechnic, University, all across the board. Could not even get employment. There was a total ban on employment ah, by such a you. useless Mahama. Such a useless Mahama wants to come back again to be our president that you are proud of. We are in this country. We are in this country. All, these are not all, all our I am all indicators, everything that shows that you are running a, a, a country broke down and by a useless Mahama. You are proud to introduce that useless Mahama to us. That one you are confident, you are proud. To introduce such a useless Mahama to us. We are in this, we are in this country. Huh? A whole, you're talking about credibility. A whole uh, 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 system of government had to set up an investigation to investigate a then vice president Mahama. Became a president. Such a useless that's, that's person. You, you want to bring him back to the country. You want to bring him back to the country. We were in this country. We were in this country. Baumia has, has no credibility. Such a useless person. A chronic liar. We'll I can tell you. We'll have to over take 90, what you call on this paper, have listed over 90 lies told by Dr. Baumia. Baumia that changed condition president. And go and acknowledge the In the previous scandal. After two months of acknowledging that rule. After two months of acknowledging that rule. We all know Dr. Baumia. Baumia has no credibility. Such a useless vice. I'm telling you, Dr. Ah, look, former president I have on this list, we and I can count them. Him back again. Dr. Baumia, you think we don't all know the things that you are saying, he has done in this country. all the things yeah, you are saying, no, but you said it. We know all those useless back, things he did. No, but you said, you all said, those corrupt yes, activities you, he was involved you, you are certain, and Dr. you are here, 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 you are you want to talk about credibility, a public lawyer like Dr. Baumia, now we have John Damani Mahama, you have a thief, you have a thief, you have a corrupt president, please, you have everything you want to describe, if you want to look at it, all right, gentlemen. Right okay. People who have stolen rice and donated on behalf of the Canary Service. Yes. Yes. Can I I'll tell you. This All right. Please, 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 please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, well, the 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 All right. So I have this one. That's a huge one. I have. So when you're talking about vice look at your, look, I, look at we have a performance, and I'm sure young, you young politicians, young, 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 young politicians. If you want to go to young, parliament, that is the point. So young politicians. You are just making so, these assertions. So, at the end of the day, who don't know? The two of you, please. We all have to be mindful of the language that we use on television. I mean, too. These are the facts and so you claim that this one is from Nana Ayimedu, Jubilee House Communications. He says. Very, Good very, morning, very role. Dump mate, have. silly mate, stupid mate, useless mate. These are the words the young politician Edem Agbana spews yes. on a platform to describe the vice president. No, no, you see, Roland, the citizen. Roland, Roland, if wow, you listen nice to me day. carefully, I said, according to Asafuaji, according to Asafuaji, the vice president has been useless because he said yeah. that the vice president yeah. was no, just a mate no, no, no. and he allowed the head. president okay. to make. And so, so don't make it. Question like, Mensa in the. I didn't, I didn't in call the, the vice president. No, can I read it, please? I said, you have. Question said Mensa says. Attorney. I wouldn't be pay attention to what you said. Yes. Very bad mate. And I said, Banzapa. Yes. Baumia is popular.